Halloween at the Cemetery, see the theatrical production Grave Matters and Untimely Departures during tour guided performances Sunday, October 26, between 2 p.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. Experience historic Fortuna Cemetery residents and hear their tales of intrigue, mystery, and unusual circumstances shrouding their deaths. Tickets are $15 each, available in advance at the Fortuna Chamber of Commerce office. Grave Matters and Untimely Departures, Sunday, October 26th, <laughs> new this year at the Runerville Cemeteries. I got mad. I, I picked up a couple of pool balls from the table and, and I threw them up against the wall right next to him. <laughs> but he wasn't scared. He picked up a pool cue it hit me right over the head with it. <laughs> it made all the local papers, too. Sturdy Clark, killed by a billiard cue. <laughs> Have you seen my little girl? Her name's Jean. She's about this high and has brown ringlets. No? Swell. Anyone have a Siggy? My name is Frances Smith Robertson, born 1901. Lived right here in Humboldt County most of my life. The water was cold at first. I kept walking. The water enveloped me. I remember thinking, I am a modern day Ophelia. Only I ought to have some flowers. My name is Andre Bonkov. My family were of proud Russian people. Soon we arrived in California. It was more beautiful than pictures or paintings could ever portray. In the fog of the bay we dispersed as we came closer. In the buildings and the streets appearing as if they were created out of nothing in that moment solely for our amazement. Small tip. If you're going to win everybody's money, don't brag about it because they will find you and murder you and take your money. Be surprised what blunt force trauma to the head and eight days in a coma can do to a man. In fact, Caused quite a stir when I returned home. You see, my funeral was open casket and I looked so different that the townspeople started gossiping that the Portland morgue had switched bodies and that it was the wrong person being buried here. On July 28, 1904, Della and I decided to take the day off. We left the children with a neighbor and we were going to visit a friend who lived in Scotia. We were just starting off down the hill into Fortuna when, well, something must have spooked Diablo and he started to run and I stood up and I grabbed the reins. Oh, I felt a little like Ben-Hur. Oh, I remember him snorting and the drumming of his hooves and the wind rushing by and my hat blowing off. And we were just at the bottom of the hill ready to make the corner and I had control when Della screamed, the buggy tipped. Think about that rush of excitement that's stronger than fear. That buggy careening down the hill, the bite of the wind, the clear blue sky, being on the edge of death, but purely, intensely alive. I strangely recall a chorus of men's voices rising in the air. One of them, Engineer Henry Coles, almost hysterical, repeating that he was unable to stop. Most of the other voices were merely gasping at the fragments of my body strewn along 200 feet of the rail track. My body was mangled and nearly cut in two as I was dragged beneath the weight of the 22 redwood logs the train bore. The governor wasn't notified of my funeral. In fact, it was only a few friends, Henry Cole one of them, who deposited my remains in an unmarked grave that forever attempted to bury the story of Henry Harrison Penoyer. In 1898, we came to Ronerville and little Georgie was born there. By that time, we'd already lost two of our little band. Harvey Jr. died of the whooping cough. We lost Tommy to dysentery when he had just turned 10. Georgie, our Georgie was such a fine, strong boy. That didn't help when he leaned out too far through the railing on the landing and fell to the bottom of the stairwell. Maybe we shouldn't have tried for more children after Georgie. But when he was gone, Harvey and I so wanted another baby in the house. I suppose I never really let Harvey see how much my pregnancies frightened me. Those last few times, one or two of our girls were pregnant at the same time as I was. Effie had married Benjamin Johnson and Jessie married Charles Farnsworth. The girls tried so hard to keep my spirits up when we were all pregnant. Effie had a copy of Maternity, a book for every wife and mother. And she and Jessie followed it like the Bible. Mother, they would say. If you just do what the book says, you won't have to fear pregnancy anymore. But how could a book change what was going to happen? 
When I was pregnant in 1901, it turned out to be twins, twin girls. We didn't know that until they were born too soon, both dead. Then in 1902, a boy that time, born too soon again, born dead. And I started bleeding, bleeding too much and the doctor couldn't stop it. So after all, I died as my mother did, giving birth to my 13th child when I was 45. The children gave me a book for Christmas in 1893, from dawn to sunset in poetry and prose. There are so many poems in that book about the emptiness of a house after a child has died. After a while, I just wouldn't read that book anymore. But one poem in it I did read over and over. I still remember how it ended. I ask not for honor, but this I would crave, that when the lips speaking are hushed in the grave, my children may gather theirs round at their side and tell of the mother who long ago died. It would be more enduring, far dearer to me than inscription on marble or granite could be, to have them tell often, as I did of yore, of the mother that trod the old kitchen floor.